The XTS has been on the market now for nine years. And in that time, we've applied the XTS in nearly every different industry. The speed, the accuracy, and the flexibility of XTS has brought advantages to nearly every industry. Whether we're doing food packaging, we're doing automotive part inspection, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, nearly every industry can benefit through the use and the optimization of an XTS in the system. What we've done now recently is we've started implementing functions on the fly. So we've had requests to do printing on the XTS while the XTS in motion. And so here we have a continuous inkjet printer. And when we do the print, we can see that at one defined print position, so as the mover passes underneath the print head, we start the print and continue on. There is some variation due to the print functionality in the vertical height of the drops. So when we see that we do it 10 times, so we print 10 times over the exact same position, then we see that the variation left and right as the mover is passing by the printer is extremely accurate and there's only a slight variation in the vertical positioning of the drops due to the print functionality itself. We take that a little bit further and we do laser marking on the fly. So we've done first a laser marking with uh, just a simple 2D matrix with the mover stopped and staying in a, in a single position. Important to note is that the scale is magnified and that each of those marks is a single millimeter so that printing is one millimeter or four millimeters wide. When we do it on the fly, then we can see that there's very, very little deviation between printing or marking at zero speed and marking at 750 millimeters per second. In 2012, we started with a simple oval system. Since then, we've added different modules of different geometries to make different shapes of XTS system. And now we can pretty much lay out any different format that a customer needs. We can do S's, we can do L's, we can do T's, we can do all sorts of different variations. We've also added different magnet sizes. So in the beginning we had simply one 50 millimeter mover. Now we have a 40 millimeter magnet to really pack the movers tight together. And we go up to a 100 millimeter magnet to give us double the force to allow us to transport much heavier payloads, even payloads up to the 10 kilogram range. After that, we developed hygienic design, and hygienic design simply doesn't mean it's steel. Hygienic design means that we've really analyzed it and taken care that there's no small gaps and that there's no metal-to-metal -metal contact or crevices where particles can, can stay and, and not get cleaned out during the system. All gaps are at least four millimeters to allow tooling to get in there to properly clean those tight areas. Then we've added track management. And with track management, it can be in the form of a simple switch, which allows us to lay two XTS rails parallel to each other and make a continuous loop system that way. But the track management can also be more. We can have different tracks in different orientations, simply the same as the railroad system, where we can move movers off onto different sections or different areas of the, of the plant. Or we can build up uh, storage areas with movers with perhaps different tooling that sit on uh, a section of track and when we make a, a product change we can automatically switch out the existing tooling for the new tooling or for other applications where the tooling stays the same I might change the size of the product drastically so I go from a 50 millimeter product to a 200 millimeter product and now I need a lot fewer movers in my XTS system and I want to quickly move those movers away, so I switch them out. And when I change back again to the small product, I can bring those movers directly back in and run. Another area to talk about is the simulation, and really not just simulation. It has to do with programming without the XTS itself. So really a one-to-one -one application without the XTS. And where does this, why is this really important? This comes in, when we start looking at what is the sequence to bring a 
system into being, right? We come up with an idea and say, I would like to build a machine that does this. We go through the conceptual phase and say, okay, how can I actually realize that? Then we order all the parts, bring all the parts together, assemble a system, and eventually we have the qualification in the FAT. So what can I speed up? Well, generally I can't speed up the ideas. It would be nice if I could speed up the ideas, but they come as they come. I can speed up the conceptual phase. So I can speed up how fast we can figure out if something is going to work. And that's where the simulation comes in. I lay out my system, figure out what is gonna work, what is not gonna work. And at the same time, while I'm building the concept, I can actually start programming the entire machine. And that's now going to shorten my realization. So I take the project that I wrote to simulate my system and I dump it directly on the machine when it's ready. I don't have to run a second set of simulation software to see if I can make my timings or to see if my system is going to work. So here we see an example of a setup. I can quickly lay out my XTS and I can quickly see that, oh, perhaps at station C, I'm gonna start building up too many movers and I'm gonna build up uh, a queue here and it's eventually gonna back into system B. And I also see that there's no movers waiting for station A, that he needs more movers to be coming through. So perhaps now I need to double up station C so that he can provide more movers to station A. Or I start getting into bigger, more complicated systems and starting to take a look and say, okay, now at station H and station C, I have an awful lot of movers in production at any given time. This might be highly desirable for problematic stations. Things where I have fill heads, where for example, maybe peanut butter doesn't flow well and my nozzles tend to jam. So it would be great to have a lot of extra stations ready to go so that when one nozzle doesn't work, I can just disable that one and keep the rest going and I still have enough movers coming out to feed stations G, F, E and D. So I can lay out my system and I can determine what's going to be the optimal positioning of my XTS. Perhaps it's best that I put everything in the middle of the system and have the XTS run on the outside. Like we have here, I can assemble and build all the robots in the middle of the XTS and I have all the movers run on the outside. Or I can go the other route and say, okay, it's best if my XTS is as narrow as possible, but I need a curved section here and I want to bring everything through this curve and I want to connect to something maybe with a rotary me mechanism. And so I can determine beforehand very quickly, do I need to adapt the layout of my XTS track, perhaps for um, the factory? It may be as well that simply there's a pole that I have to go around that's not movable. Okay, well, if we put in a couple of curve modules, I can now make my XTS work around that. We've had lots of requests over the years with the simulations. The simulation is not new. We've had that for quite a while. But what we haven't had the ability to do is to bring that simulation and take everything from the simulation and drop it into the HMI or the graphical user interface for the machine. So now in the next release of the software, we have the TC HMI XTS extension, which will give us the ability to take my pre-built simulated XTS, drop that directly in my HMI, and now I can see exactly where all my movers are. This becomes really important on much longer XTS systems now. We've got XTS systems that are in excess of 50 meters. And when a mover is that far away from the operator, I need to know which station that that mover had a problem at. Did the robot jam on the mover in station 20 or was it station 25? So now here we can very quickly go through and say, okay, we highlight this mover. It was in station 22. Operator, go to station 22, take a look and see what happened. Oh, the robot didn't drop the product. The mover is staying because of that. And I can quickly get all the information about the mover and say, okay, where is that mover positioned? What was that mover doing? And now I have all of these diagnostics ready to go in the HMI. This also requires support and training. 
Over the years, we've developed an extensive network of all of our support engineers throughout the world. We have well over 100 XTS expert engineers worldwide that can go through the entire process of an XTS from the concept phase through the commissioning phase, the startup phase, and all of the advanced programming functions. We also now have the capability to do a fully assembled system. We can assemble the machine bed, we can assemble the track, the movers, we can put it all together, we can test it, we can run it in our facility, pack it up, and ship it out so that the XTS is all ready to go. It simply has to be taken out of the crate, mounted onto the machine, connected to the computer, and it's all ready to run. So that leaves us what's coming in the future. The XTS is by no means finished. We will continue to develop functionality for the XTS, and we will continue to release all of these new features.